What is Enigma? The Enigma machine is an encryption device finished in 1923, initially intended for commercial use. It was adopted by the military and government in multiple countries like Italy and Japan, but most famously Nazi Germany, before and during the Second World War. The Enigma machine replaces the original message, which can be written and read by a person, and it replaces it with an encrypted message, which doesn't make any sense when read. To restore the message to original readable form, you have to decrypt it by using a similar Enigma machine with the same encryption settings. After the decryption, the message makes sense to a human again. Why do you need encryption in the military? If two armies fight each other in the war, they either meet somewhere in the fields, woods and cities, and fight until one of those armies runs out of soldiers or weapons. This is called the War of Attrition or one of the armies tries to surprise the other army by attacking in unexpected time or place or direction. This was called Blitzkrieg, and currently it's referred to as trying to outmaneuver the enemy. The war of attrition is much longer and more expensive than the outmaneuvering and surprising the enemy. So every war and battle is preferably trying this option first and switching to it, at least partially, when possible. Any surprise that you can use during the war is to your advantage. So each army needs to keep as many secrets as possible. As the armies and their individual units are big and the distances between the parts are greater than what a running soldier can cover in a few minutes, communication within the army is done by technical means. Voice over radio, Morse code over radio, homing pigeons carrying a piece of paper. The problem with any kind of communication is that it can be heard or read by anyone when it's traveling from one place to another, and that includes the enemy. If the message is heard or read by the enemy and the army is trying to plan a surprise attack, then guess what? It's no longer a secret and a surprise. To fix this issue, instead of sending the readable message, you send the encrypted message, which doesn't make sense to the enemy, even if intercepted. What does it mean to encrypt or to decrypt a message? To encrypt a message means replacing the original letters from the message with some other letters, so the message is not readable by a human afterwards. The simplest forms of letter replacement are just by shifting letters up by a few, e.g. you change A to B, B to C, C to D. Once the message is encrypted, you can send it and it's no longer just simply readable. To decrypt the message then means replacing the encrypted letters with the original ones, so B to A, C to B, D to C, and so forth so the message becomes readable by a human again. What are some types of text encryption? We could be replacing letters by shifting letters up or down. You change A to B, B to C, C to D, etc. But that is too simple and can be figured out by the enemy too quickly. We could also be replacing letters in random fashion, e.g. you change A to K, B to Z, C to J. But this is also not that difficult to figure out. The problem with simple character replacement methods is that they always change the original letter to the same encrypted letter. So the enemy could crack the encrypted message by figuring out how often each letter occurs in the encrypted message and then compare it to how often each letter occurs naturally in the language of the message. Or by capturing a single decrypted message and comparing it to the original message would immediately reveal what letters are changed into what other letters. How to improve the letter replacement encryption so it wouldn't be easily crackable? To avoid giving the enemy the option of guessing the letters correctly by counting their occurrence, you should avoid encrypting the source letter to a same encrypted letter. So for example, instead of always encrypting A as K, you should encrypt A as K first, but then to Z, then to D, thus making the encrypted output look as much random as possible. To make this even harder, you should change the encryption keys as often as possible. So even if the enemy figures out how one message was encrypted, this cannot be used to decrypt another message, and the enemy has to figure out the encryption keys again. Even if it's possible to decrypt the message by the enemy in the end, if the decryption takes long enough, the content of the message loses value. So if the message says, we will attack in four hours, there's no value to decrypt and read that message one week later. Changing of the encryption keys. To successfully encrypt and decrypt a message, both sides, the encrypting one and decrypting one, need to be aware of what the current keys are. Otherwise, the decrypted message wouldn't make sense. 
So you could either send the encryption keys before the actual encrypted message, but then anyone with the Enigma machine could use those keys to decrypt the message. And this would be only safe until the enemy captures at least one Enigma device, or you could agree how to change the keys based on the current time and date of the month. So you would then just use the current date or time to switch to a different encryption keys, e.g. from the book holding those keys. But this is only safe until the enemy captures at least one such book with keys. You would then have to issue a new set of books with encryption keys. We know that the keys for Enigma were changed every day, so on different days the same original message would be encrypted to a different encrypted message. The encryption keys were picked every day from the codebook. How was Enigma safer than using simple character substitution? The encryption was done using three encryption wheels, and after each press one wheel moved to another position, which resulted in the same input letter being encrypted in different letter, because the connections of the wheels change after each key press. You change the encryption keys by setting the wheels to a different starting position, so starting wheel position ABC encrypts the message differently than starting wheel position LOL. Additionally, you could configure on which letter of the first wheel the next wheel should move. So the wheel on the right moves after each key press, but the wheel in the middle needs to move at least once per each right wheel rotation, and part of the encryption keys is setting this to move at the right letter, e.g. when the right wheel goes to letter N. To complicate the encryption even further, the front of the machine had connectors for cables, which when inserted did additional swap a letter pair. E.g. when you inserted cable in connectors L and R, the encrypted message LOL would become ROR instead. How do you use the Enigma machine to encrypt the message? Both sides of the communication, the sending side and receiving side, have to agree on the current encryption keys. This was done by taking the current date and looking up the machine settings for that date in the codebook. You need to set up the following. Which rotors to use? There have been eight different rotors. In which order to use these rotors? The rotor order matters. On what letters of the first rotor, the second rotor should step over to next position, where the cables should be inserted in the front panel. Once you have set up the machine in the correct starting position, you press down and hold the letter from the original message. A light with letter lights up, you write that letter down, as this is your encrypted letter, and proceed with the next letter. Then you take that encrypted message and send it over to the other side of your army by sending the message as Morse code over radio. How to decrypt the message using the Enigma machine. You start by setting the machine in the same way as you do for the encryption. The wheel types, orders, stepping positions, and front cable placement must exactly match the encryption settings to successfully decrypt the message. You got the encrypted message which you received over the radio, and you start typing the encrypted message into your Enigma machine. Pressing down the first letter, writing down the letter that lighted up, going through the whole message and voila, you just decrypted the message. There is no switch between encryption and decryption on Enigma as the letter replacement is symmetric. If you press letter A and P lights up, then in the same rotor position, you could press letter P and the letter A would light up. To demonstrate this, I have temporarily disabled rotor step over here. Description of my Enigma replica. I have created my Enigma replica from a couple of separate modules, so any of them could be easily repaired or replaced in case there would be an issue with some of the modules, or if a module would be upgraded to an improved version. The modules are lights with letters, keyboard, plug board, encryption wheels slash rotors. Each of the modules has its own PCB, as it's easier and more reliable to solder components onto a PCB then wiring them in place. The individual modules are interconnected using flat cable, as it's very fast to crimp an IDC connector onto flat cable compared to soldering 26 wires to PCB or to a connector. The replica also contains the 3D printed plastic cover and wooden case, which also took some effort to build, and they make the replica resemble the original even more. I have chosen to use existing modern components for lights, buttons, plug board, and encryption rotors, as recreating the original components would be way too much hassle and would be less reliable than using the modern ones. But the principle of the machine is still retained. The electricity travels from battery to switches, 
then to mechanical encryption rotors and back to lights just like in the original Enigma machine. So no modern component or chip replaces the original electromechanical encryption. Lights. The lights are done using LEDs in SMD package, which are soldiered onto the PCB. For the full brightness, the current is limited by a resistor. Originally, 220 ohms resulted in 13 milliamps, which was still too bright. So this was replaced with 470 ohms resistor, and the resulting current is around 6 milliamps. The lower brightness option is achieved by using PWM with low duty cycle. 3D printed light channels are placed on the PCB, so the shining LED doesn't light up a nearby letter, and that light channels mount against the top cover also hold semi-transparent paper with printed letters in place. Keyboard. This part of the machine caused more issues than I expected it would. It's based on a simple push button on which a cap can be installed, which in this case would be the key part sticking out of the case. The key should be long to resemble the original Enigma, and this meant that it needed more support from sides, so it would travel mostly just up and down and not wiggle sideways. I've added button channels to the top cover with little slack to guide the keys when pressed and released, but this resulted in the, the keys getting stuck due to slight misalignment between top cover and the actual button positions on PCB, and also due to 3D printed button caps and keyboard case not being smooth enough. I ended up adding channels on the PCB and buttons directly instead on the top cover, having more slack around the button caps on the top cover, and sanding all the holes and rod of each button. It's not perfect, but it's much more usable than what I had in the beginning. Plug board. Plug board holds 3.5 millimeter monojack connectors with internal switches. So when no cable is inserted in the plug board, no letter swapping occurs. Inserting the cables into plug board strengthens the encryption, but even without them, the machine encrypts just fine for our demonstration purposes. The front cover of the plug board has white letters similar to the original Enigma. This was done by 3D printing with two different colors, manually switching filaments during the print. Encryption wheels rotors. The whole magic of the Enigma machine is in the encryption rotors. Each of the rotors has 26 input ports and 26 output ports, which are connected in random-like manner, and this randomness does the actual encryption. This is where the original letters get replaced with different letters. The original Enigma had actual wires connecting input and output ports inside these wheels. But this looked like way too much work to solder by hand, so I opted for using PCBs here with SMD pogo pins. The 3D printed inner part of the wheel was holding the pogo pins in place when they were soldered. The outer ring then helps to hold the pogo pins together with the inner part in place when the wheel is turning to the next position. The first version of these rotors was supposed to be holding the pogo pins in place by covering the static part of the pogo pins with epoxy resin. But the epoxy resin was more liquid than expected and was dripping out from unexpected places of the 3D printed wheel. So this idea was dropped. Moving the wheels using motors and photosensors. The part of the replica which doesn't reproduce the original at all is using an Arduino, DC motors, and two photosensors to move the wheel after each key press to the next position. I have seen other replicas to try to reproduce the original ratchet and PAL mechanism, either from wood or 3D printed ones. They were failing to do the wheel step in some cases due to manufacturing or design imperfections, or due to the used material, wood, plastic, not being rigid enough or having too much slack. As I'm not a mechanical engineer and my mechanical skills are very limited, I decided not to do this and just use tooth gears and DC motors for the movement and photo sensor for exact position detection. This required some microcontroller to handle the movement, so a small Arduino board was chosen for this. On the original Enigma, you would set up the starting wheel position by moving the wheels by hand. But as I used a small DC motor with gearbox to reduce the speed and increase the torque, you cannot move the middle and right wheel on my replica by hand. That is only possible on the left wheel, which is not driven by the motor here. Instead, you have four hidden buttons to move the middle and right wheel when you are setting up the machine for the encryption or decryption. Additionally, the step over of the middle wheel happens always after 26 key presses and movements of the right wheel. 
So this is also an additional simplification. I have created in 3D printed the plastic case of Enigma to resemble the original machine. And this took much more time than expected, also due to low experience in 3D modeling, which I slightly improved during the making of this project. The model was created in a non-commercial version of Fusion 360, exported to STL file, prepared for 3D printing using Prusa Slicer and printed on my Prusa Mini. Unfortunately, parts of the case had to be split into smaller ones for printing as my Prusa Mini printing volume is smaller than the design box. They were then glued together using CA glue, and when the lighting is low and I take a picture of the machine using my average phone, it's not visible on the photos. Yay! In places where I needed multiple colors in the print, I did set changing of the color in Prusa Slicer, and then I manually switched the filament during the printing. To save some cost, I used cheaper filaments. The black filament was fine, but the white and gray filaments were stringing and resulted in uglier prints, thus they needed more cutting with pliers and sanding. Wooden box. The wooden box is really not needed for encryption, but it adds nicely to the look of the whole replica, so it was made anyway. I have used 8mm plywood for the top and bottom of the box, while the sides are from 10mm softwood, bought from Hornback, similar to Home Depot. The hinges for the lid were bought, but the hinges for the front flap were 3D printed. The metallic mechanism to limit the opening of the lid had to be cut into the sides of the box to not interfere with the Enigma machine inserted in the box. The wooden box was painted using mahogany glazing afterwards. The quality of the build is not that great. Skilled woodworkers would call it terrible straight away. But I'm usually not doing any woodworking, and I'm also missing some tools to achieve straight and angled cuts like table saw, which I'm not going to buy for a single project, so I would say the quality of the box is proportional to my skills and tools available. It took me almost exactly two months from start to finish to make this. From the start of August, when I saw the original Enigma machine in the military museum in Pivka, Slovenia, until the end of September. I spent all the possible free time with this, as I knew that once I would put this on hold due missing components or some other project, I wouldn't probably finish it. I learned a couple of things along the way, mostly in the mechanical part of the project. That means encryption wheels and their turning. And the keyboard, while I was pretty familiar with electronics, 3D printing and programming before this. Was it worth it? Well, to some of the people I showed the pictures of my machine, it's just a typewriter. But to the ones who are interested in the history of the Second World War, or who are tech enthusiasts, those do appreciate this. I've learned stuff and spent my free time in a more meaningful way than just binge watching stuff on streaming services. So I would say, yes, this was worth my time and effort. I also got to play with some nice text to speech tools. Plus I've used some other tool to generate a couple of random illustrational nonsensical pictures. So it was even real fun at times.